Hey everybody, Dana Dovey here taking over Taylor Cummings' YouTube channel. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and is taking advantage of this time that you're spent inside with your families um, and just thinking about everyone during this time. So we're going to kick things off and we're going to get started with some questions and answers. So whatever you guys have, send it on in for me. All right, first one coming up. Am I friends with Meg Taylor? Yeah, I know. Uh, hey, Ian, how are you? Pretty good friends with Meg. Um, got to watch her play throughout her entire Maryland career and, and what a career that was. You know, that kid, there's nothing she can't do between the pipes. So really, really uh, appreciate all she did in a Maryland uniform. And to be the first goalie ever to win the Tour Twan is uh, kind of such an amazing accomplishment. So super proud of her. Awesome. Do you respect goalies? I am one. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So um, growing up in Can I played box lacrosse all growing up. I didn't even know what women's field lacrosse was till I was about 14 years old, which like seems crazy to me now since I love field lacrosse so much. But um, when I was younger, I have an older brother, Jason, who his goalie actually got hurt in the middle of the season so he had to step in between uh the pipes and, and take it for the team and once I started watching him play goalie uh, I was asking my dad dad let me play goalie let me play goalie you know Jason's playing goalie and whenever my older brother did that's exactly what I wanted to do um my dad as a coach was like are you serious you really want to play goalie and he goes to me well I said to him actually if I wasn't your daughter you know you'd let me play goalie we need a goalie too so I ended up playing goalie for three years in box lacrosse um, and absolutely loved it didn't love the bruises but I always say my last world cup might be spent playing goalie um, if I can no longer run the field maybe I can put the pads on it and make a few stops so that's the goal off of that oh this is a sad question how would you feel if world cup was canceled or postponed like the Olympics. You know, my heart just absolutely breaks for all the Olympians out there. I cannot imagine training that hard to play on the biggest stage ever and, and, and getting that postponed or canceled. So um, I think you would just look at the bigger picture and, and realize that this is all bigger than us. It's all bigger than our sport. It's all bigger than any one event and you'd be have to get over it that way. But I think I would just feel absolutely crushed, um, gutted, and you obviously would have to move on, but um, I'm thinking of all those athletes out there and appreciate everything you did, especially the Canadian athletes, and um, just want to thank you guys for all the time and dedication you put into training for this Olympics, and uh, hopefully we get to see you at a, a World Cup or another Olympics um, whenever we can get things up and running again. What is your biggest piece of advice for applying for a lacrosse scholarship at a college? Uh, this is definitely a good one. I would just say cast a huge net. You know, obviously you have your, your goals and your dreams of where you want to play in college and maybe specific colleges have the major or the minor that you're looking for as well. But cast a huge net. Um, email those coaches. Go to those universities, camps and clinics and, and try to get out and, and play as much as possible and um, just play, play your best and go as hard as you can. And hopefully the school that you love also loves you and it can be a perfect match. So I think that's the biggest thing. Just don't set your sights on just a couple schools. Kind of think the bigger picture on that and, and just know that there's a, a school and a place for everyone out there to play is the, is the biggest one and not to get discouraged, but to keep trying. How do you feel about the WPLL having four teams instead of five? Um, you know, I think it was definitely hard to see us lose a team. I think we need to support our sport a lot better and get out to games and buy tickets, um, watch some streamed online. If you're someone out there that um, is interested in investing in the WPLL or, or the idea of it as well, um, passing that information along. You know, for us, we want to get it right, but most importantly, we want to keep the WPLL going for as long as possible so future generations have an opportunity to be professional lacrosse players. So we had to cut things down in order to keep things going so that we can see greater growth in the future. So as hard as it was 
to kind of do that right now and and lose lose that team and lose some of those players we're hoping that in the in the long run it, it all pays off and the w wpll is is bigger and brighter in the future is is the whole goal what is your favorite stick and stringing uh, so I'm pretty particular about my sticks and my stringing, if anyone knows me. Um, right now I'm going with the, the gate draw head. You know, I, I think it's super versatile for anyone who takes the draw. You centers out there, whether you're an attacker, a midfielder, or a defender who takes the draw, you know, I think it has a huge advantage to the design of it. As well, it's a pocket that you can actually play with, so you don't have to pass it on and off the field. Um, the stringing for me, I'm a traditionalist. I love all leathers. I just think you get the, the biggest whip and such great speed off of your shots. Um, if you have a mesh pocket, it has a nice hold, it's comfortable, it's easy to break in, but the speed of your shot isn't as hard as it possibly could be. So as an attacker, I want every advantage I can, I can have on those goalies out there, especially the, the Meg Taylors in the world and the Molly Wolves. So um, going with all leathers, traditional pocket, and then uh, the, the, gate, um, the gate draw stick. Any advice for players and goalies coming into tryout season? I would just say don't put pressure on yourself. Go into those tryouts like you would go into a game. Be prepared. Be ready. So you got to think about your position. What does that look like? You know, fitness is always going to be a key. Your stick work has to be clean and sharp. Um, and the more prepared you are going into those tryouts, the more confident you're going to be on the field. And the more confidence you have, you know, you're going to be able to play your best. So I think... Don't stress out about it. Kind of think about what your expectations are realistically. Where do you think you fall amongst those other players that you're trying out against? Um, and you know, you can't coach hard work and you can't coach, you know, that grit and that uh, tenacity that you have when you go and you try out. And just when you hit that field, be a great teammate, go as hard as you can um, and let your play speak for yourself. And if you're one of those top players, you're gonna make that team. And if not, whatever team you land on, just make sure you make that team as best as possible, better than it was before you got there is kind of the goal with that. If there are any, if there, is there any rule or aspect of the men's game you wish was implemented into the women's game. Hmm, maybe I could reverse that. There's a lot of the women's rules that I would like to implement into the men's game. Um, no, I think I think the women's game at, at the professional level has everything kind of worked out and, and we're good to go off of that. You know, one thing between the two versions of the men's and the women's game is obviously the contact. Um, I love the women's game, how it's very finesse, very clean. You know, the athleticism speaks for itself. The skill with a, a smaller pocket depth allows us to really show a level of skill that you you probably don't anticipate you'd be able to do with that with that smaller pocket. So um, I love the women's game and, and how it's set up with the possession clock being fast. Um, one thing just in women's lacrosse, I wish they would kind of ease up a little bit more on defenders and allow them to play a little bit more physical. You know, I think people cut back on allowing us to be a little bit more physical without being dangerous. So that would be the only thing freed up for the defenders to, to play a little bit tougher. I know being an attacker, I should, probably shouldn't say that. The defenders are tough enough um, at the highest level, but I just think that would, you know, give people a little bit more room to play and have, have less whistles. Any advice for Canadians trying to play college lacrosse in the States? Um, yeah, my biggest advice is just to be able to put yourself in a position to get seen, um, whether that's playing in any tournaments or going to camps, going to clinics. Um, also, Canadians have a very particular style about their play, the stick work, the creativity, um, and just the looseness at which we kind of play the game is, is so critical to our success. So making sure that, you know, obviously the U.S. has the highest level of lacrosse with collegiate um, as well as professional just understanding that being Canadian is a huge plus and a huge, huge advantage. So play that to your strengths and just utilize that when you go to these tournaments in the States um, that you showcase that. And also to just go out to those camps and those clinics that you know you might be interested in those schools, sign up and, and get on campus and give yourself the best shot to be seen. Um, and then also with your social media, your Instagrams and sending videos, uh, just Video yourself in the backyard, show coaches what you have, and hopefully they see what they like and they get out to see you play. 
Who is the funniest player in the WPLL? I got to go with my girl, my uh, fellow Greyhound, Molly Wolf. That that girl cracks me up. Um, even in the middle of the game, even though we're on different teams, she's always like chirping and, and making jokes. I just think her personality, you know, lights up the room. To be able to coach her for four years at Loyola um, and to have her on in that locker room and on that bus, you know, she made the team so much better, not only because she was one of the best goalies in the country, but just for her personality and, and her humor. So funniest players definitely has to go to my girl, Molly Wolf. The hardest worker in the WPLL. I don't want to leave anybody out here. I think, you know, every player in the WPLL, you know, they have a full-time job, two full-time jobs. They run a club team. They run their own company. You have a uh, Zimmerman who's working in New York City, crushing it. Um, and she works out at like four o'clock in the morning in Tone House or wherever she is doing the craziest workouts ever. So I think that's where, you know, you have a lot of respect for your teammates, obviously, but your competitors in the WPLL, just knowing how much time outside of their day job, their night job, their day and night job, they have to do extra uh, on their own to be ready for game day. So I can't really say one player because I, I would be on here for the full full time, just name dropping people. Um, but it, it's just incredible what these women do daily outside of their full time jobs to to put on the best show for for all of you guys and to inspire you to be your best. So can't can't say just one. I'm an incoming freshman on varsity. Any advice? Biggest, just be yourself. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman, junior, sophomore, senior. Even on varsity before you haven't, you know, you're a team, you're a huge part of that team and uh, you don't have to put any higher expectations on yourself than just being a part of the team and, and making the team better in, in whichever way you can and whatever role you're is and you, whatever role you're playing is, um, you know, I think that's just so important not to kind of add more pressure to yourself than there needs to be. Um, being a freshman on varsity is awesome, but being a senior on varsity is just as important. So I just think go out there, be yourself, go as hard as you can um, and do whatever you can to make your team better and just have so much fun and appreciate the opportunity that you have that maybe other freshmen don't and be humble in that whole process as well. How can I get a better, oh, how can I get better at stick control and be as comfortable with the ball as possible? play as much as you you possibly can. So for me, you know, my lacrosse stick isn't a piece of equipment. I want it to be an extension of my hand, extension of my body. So in order to do that, I need to have it in my hands as much as possible. So whether that's, you know, around the house, if your your mom and dad will let you, but cradling around the house, in the backyard, playing wall ball, going out in the backyard um, right now, and just doing whatever you can, putting that time and effort into your stick and and making it be a part of your game, not a piece of equipment, I think is the biggest advice. And in order to feel comfortable with it, the pocket has to be ready to go and, and get that ball in that sweet spot of your stick right underneath those shooting strings. Make it so it's just kind of sitting there. Um, and you can do that by pulling the outside leathers or the outside strings a little bit tighter and having the middle strings drop a little bit lower so you have a nice little hold. Um, and just play around with your stick. I think that's another big thing. So many lacrosse players don't even know how to string up their shooting strings or tighten their pocket or loosen their pocket. But a big part of getting comfortable with your stick work is getting really comfortable with your stick and kind of knowing, do you need to tighten it? Do you need to loosen it? Um, do you want to shoot overhand, sidearm, underhand, and just kind of playing around with all those different techniques until everything becomes just so second nature to you. How do I get noticed by my coaches that I'm trying the best that I can? My coaches that I'm trying the best I can. Um, I think if there's like, you know, communication is huge. If there's if there's any disconnect between you and your coaches, um, one thing I can tell all you players out there, if you think you know what your coach is thinking, I promise you, 
you probably don't, you know, your coaches, there's maybe one coach on your team for 30 of players or two coaches on your team for 30 players. So, you know, I think we assume a lot, you know, our coach is thinking this or coach thinks this about me or coach thinks I'm not trying. And um, I promise you there's probably a disconnect a lot of the times there is just go up to your coach before or after practice and and just have an open conversation and let them know how you're feeling um and then be really open to the feedback that you receive from your coach as well you know nothing's personal everything's positional when it comes to sport um, and i think it's important that we understand the lines between that and, and that we can take that constructive criticism or that feedback um, and just make make ourselves better you know obviously sometimes it's gonna hurt and sometimes, you know, it's going to be a little bit upsetting, but take from that what you can, um, make the most of that and, and utilize that to, to make yourself better for your team. That's the most important thing. Ava, what is your favorite stick trick? Ava, I love stick tricks. You know, I think that's another, to go back to that other question, how do I get more comfortable with my, with your stick? You know, for me, when I was playing on my U19 um, national team for the first time, we had to fill out these weekly evaluations and rank, like, how are you feeling? How's your fitness? Um, what did you do for your workout? And I used to always write in my evaluations, like, I just did 60 minutes of stick work and my coach would come back like, uh, Dana, that's not really what we're looking for you to do. Stick tricks, we want you to think more about like wall ball and more basic skills and, and your technique. And, and for me, I was always like, it is stick work. It is working on my technique. You know, if I can take a tough stick trick and make it look smooth and easy, then basic passing and catching is going to be, you know, super, super easy. So um, stick tricks is a huge part of my daily uh, training and playing. And, you know, I think that's what makes the actual game for me look a lot more smoother than maybe some other people. It's just making it as difficult with those stick tricks. So, um, hmm, my favorite stick trick. I think the kick flip. Um, you can go on the WPLL uh, Pro Women's Lax Instagram and you can check out tons of stick tricks on there. But um, juggling too, just bouncing the ball off the head of my stick, the handle, off my knees, off my feet, and kind of like hacky sack a little bit with that. Um, you see soccer players when they hit the field, the first thing they do is they grab their ball and they're juggling with their feet and their knees and off their head and kind of working on that touch. And, you know, when I think about lacrosse players a lot of the times when, you know, when we go to the field, we sit down and we're kind of talking with our buddies. Um, and I wish we would pick that up from soccer a little bit more, hit the field and, and pick up the ball and just work on our touch with the juggling and things like that. Emma, do you have any advice for a lefty dodging on attack? Biggest advice would be, you know, when you're dodging as a lefty um, against a righty defender, naturally the defender's stick is marking your stick. So my favorite thing to do when I'm dodging off of that is always fake split, like I'm going in one direction to get them to drop step to their non-stick side. So they can either switch their hands across or they drop their foot a little bit. And then as soon as I see that movement, then I'm able just to change my speed dodge hard through their stick hand and get them on my back. Um, and just knowing that, you know, as a lefty against a righty, that defender has to reach across your body to block your shot or check behind your, your back to get that check off. So you have a huge advantage as a lefty against a righty. So fake split, like you're going to your right side, juke them a little bit and then change the speed to your stick side. And that will free your hands up so you can get that shot off. Other good thing about being a lefty, there's not that many, unless you're in Canada, then we got a, a ton of them, but um, all you lefties in the US and around the world, you know that's, that's a huge advantage to you. So keep using that lefty and then work on your other dominant hand, that right hand as well. Meg Hillman, we got some greyhounds on here. Thanks, buddy. Favorite thing about working at Loyola? Um, you know, I just love that team so much. And I love that school lacrosse is, is everything at Loyola. So being a lacrosse player, I don't think there's any better place to play than a school that just values lacrosse and loves lacrosse. Um, and the other best thing about Loyola is just, is just the team. You know, those girls in that locker room love lacrosse. They love each other and practice is their favorite part of the day. And, and game day is their favorite day out of the week. So, you know, there's no better place. And they get to work with the staff. Our head coach, Jen Adams, the best in the world. You know, when you talk about the GOAT, you think absolutely about Jen and everything she's done for the sport. Um, and then the rest of our staff, 
Caroline and myself as the assistant, Charlotte as our director of operations. Um, and then we also have our, our director of report, Teddy Burns, um, and Donna, our, our athletic director. So we got a lot of powerful woman, women um, behind the scenes there, making sure that, that the hounds are looked after. But best part about Loyola is that lacrosse team. And I love you guys and I miss you guys. And, you know, I wish we were out at practice right now. And, you know, there's not a day during all of this I don't think about you guys in the season that we were having. So... Now I'm going to get all emotional. Miss the hounds so much. Ella Foot, what is the best thing you have been told by a coach that inspires you and motivates you? Um, I've had a lot of great coaches um, and a lot of great advice, but you know, one thing that sticks sticks with me every day when I wake up and when I'm training is if it's important to you, you find a way, and if it's not, you find an excuse. Um, and I know we're all there's so many things coming at us all the time and, and we easily get distracted, but I think that's a touchstone for me. And, um, when we're out recruiting all day and we're outside in the sun for like eight hours watching you guys play, and then we have to get, get to the field and play ourselves. And you're literally so sunburned, so dehydrated, um, and tired is just knowing that, you know, playing professional lacrosse and playing lacrosse is so important to me. So you figure it out and you make it work and, you, you find the time in the day to either practice or run or mobility or whatever it is you need to do because it's important to you. Um, you know, I think it's really easy to make excuses and say why I can't do something or it might be too hard or wh whatever you're thinking. And um, yeah, it's my, that's my biggest advice for you guys. If it's important to you, find a way and figure it out. And, and uh, you know, you're not going to have any re regrets at the end of the day or at the end of the season if that's your mentality. Grace Jenkins. How or how's your stick work routine? Um, you know, I always, always start my, my training with some stick work and, and get that warmed up. And I like to really practice how I play. Um, and to me, you know, it's not, it's not actually really practice. I think practice is, is so fun and we're, you're just messing around and you're playing and you're out there. And I think replicate whatever you're doing um, to game situations as much as possible. Um, but then also take the time to really have, have fun with it and, and be creative too. So it doesn't always have to be so structured. It doesn't always have to be so intense. Um, we can all loosen up a little bit more and, and kind of remember why did we start playing or, or why do we play? Because we love it. We love being around our best friends and our teammates. Uh, we love being challenged. So to kind of think about a typical stick work routine, first start out, kind of work on your stick tricks, get your hand eye warmed up, um, get your stick warmed up, get some really nice clean touches with the ball, whether you're juggling um, or you're d doing different stick tricks, and then kind of go through the stick work that you need to utilize in a game. So whether that's an offensive player and you're working on your passing and you're catching and you're shooting or you're dodging, midfielders or centers, you're kind of working on your one-handed stick work, and then defenders, you're checking your ground balls, your body positioning, but kind of think about what you're utilizing in a game, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and always strengthen your strengths so you're at the top there, and then continue to work on those weaknesses off of that. So whether that's your non-dominant hand or your one-handed stick work or your power shooting, whatever it may be, have like a clear idea of, okay, what am I doing so well? What do I want to improve on? And then make sure every time you go out and you're playing, you're kind of hitting both of those. Ava, how often do you practice your stick work? I would say daily, um, especially when we're in season two. Um, as a lacrosse player, you're having to rely on that stick so often. That's kind of everything you're doing out on the field involves your stick. Um, so I would just say daily, even if it's just five minutes a day, just make sure you have that stick in your hand and you know, you're know you getting out, you're passing on the wall or you're getting out and playing on a net. Um, if you have someone to play with or you don't, yeah, five minutes to start. And then always give yourself some time off too. So take a whole day you know, where you're not playing any lacrosse at all and you take a little bit of a break, you want to be excited to pick up your stick and disappointed when you have to put it down. But if you're constantly playing and training all the time, you kind of lose that, that passion a little bit too. So it's really important to take a break. Tegan, what was your journey like getting to this level that you are at? Um, you know, Tegan, I didn't anticipate being here. You know, when I, when I grew up playing lacrosse, I had to play boys lacrosse because there was no girls lacrosse where I was from in Fergus, Ontario, Canada. Um, 
I played with my brother, I was four years old, and, and my brother's three years older than I am. And I ended up playing on his travel team. I didn't play too much. I think I rode the bench a lot that season I was, as I was working on getting my feet under me as a, as a young four-year-old. But um, I didn't anticipate really going anywhere with lacrosse. I was always a, a big ice hockey player, um, not a stereotype. Every Canadian does play hockey. We do skate. Um, even if you don't play, you can skate too. And it wasn't until I was 14 years old that um, the town next to me in Alora, their owner of their arena sent me a tryout for uh, girls lacrosse, field lacrosse, U19 national team uh, tryout. And I was like, you can play for Canada in lacrosse. This is pretty cool. So I went to the tryout. I had my box lacrosse stick and my box lacrosse equipment. Um, and the coach came over to me and she was like, oh, you can't use any of that. You got to tie it in your pocket. This is a totally different game. Um, and ever since then, I've never looked back. I've I've continued to play lacrosse and I had the opportunity to go to the U.S. Um, to play lacrosse at university and I graduated from the University of Maryland uh, where I was playing on our senior national team uh, throughout that whole time as well and when I got the call that you know there's going to be a women's professional lacrosse team late on in my career I was just like so happy so excited to think that I was still able to continue to play and I could play professionally because that was something that I never dreamed about. It wasn't, it wasn't an opportunity. Um, so what was my journey like? I would say it wasn't, it wasn't very typical. Um, I just loved playing lacrosse. And when I had to make that decision when I was 17 years old in high school, do I want to continue playing hockey or do I want to play lacrosse? Um, it was a really easy, easy decision for me. I woke up, I wanted to play lacrosse. I went to bed, I wanted to play lacrosse. When it was hockey season, I wished it was lacrosse season. Um, so I was able to wait longer in my high school career to, to really pick just one sport and it was easy for me to, to pick lacrosse. And I met the best friends in the world playing lacrosse. I've had the most incredible mentors and role models through lacrosse. Um, and I've had a family that has been super, super supportive. You know, I think lacrosse runs in the Doby blood. Um, a lot of people out there might know my second cousin, Dane, who plays professionally um, out West too. A lot of people think we're brother and sister, but Dane and Dana, I don't think, I don't think my parents would do that to me. But um, I think the journey of lacrosse has been unforgettable. And, you know, I owe lacrosse so much for giving me so many great opportunities. What predictions did you have for the top picks for the NCAA tournament for women's lacrosse? Oh, hounds were going all the way. That was my pick. Um, you know, I thought this year, the start of the women's college um, season was, was one for the ages. You never knew going into game day who was going to win. We had so many top 10 upsets and top five upsets. And, you know, the rankings and the polls were constantly shifting and changing. Um, and it was gonna, it was gonna shape up to be, I think, one of the best, one of the best lacrosse seasons we've seen across the board. Uh, but my prediction was Loyola, top, top of the board, ending the season number one. I liked that question. Um, what's a good stick for a midi on the circle? Uh, Grace, honestly, as a center, um, it's, it's really personal preference for me I like a stick that's that's really durable and and it doesn't bend too much um when you're taking that draw because I want to have as much hold on the stick as possible um so I love I love my gate draw stick I think it offers so many different um value adds to the type of stick that it is so you can pop that ball where you want but you can also shoot with it and play defense with it at the highest level so that gate draw stick you know I think is is better than anything else on the market for for the midfield all right, you guys. Well, I think, I think we've gone through um, so many awesome questions. I, I thank you guys so much for, for hopping on. If anyone has any last questions, you can shoot them over here real quick, and we'll try to get through that, um, and then we'll close it up in a little bit. How did you first discover lacrosse? You know, my, my dad loves lacrosse so much, so... Um, like I said earlier too, whatever my brother was doing, I was right there behind him, copying him every step of the way. And so thankful that he allowed me to do that. Um, and didn't tell me to get lost and leave him alone. So 
I think as soon as I started walking, I started skating and started playing lacrosse right away with that stick in my hands. And, you know, it was a big family activity for us. We would go outside and we would play lacrosse all day long in the backyard, making up games. Um, you know, those games, for the most part, pretty much ended with me crying because my brother, you know, was either beating me too bad or I thought something was unfair. And um, those were just like the best times growing up, messing around in the backyard and, and making up games. And um, my dad would be out there with us too, you know, playing against us, going one-on-one. -on -one. I can remember him playing goalie with a broom, a broomstick that he, that he uh, put together and he would save everything we would be shooting too. So it was just, I think I discovered lacrosse obviously through my family and, and Fergus is a huge lacrosse town too. You can walk down the street and kids always have their lacrosse sticks and are playing in the backyard. And um, although my mom was a baseball, softball player, you know, I always feel bad that I, I didn't really pick up that sport or, or stick with that sport. It started with t-ball and ended with t-ball didn't have a too much action for me but you know my mom would even be in the backyard with her with her baseball mitt and playing catch with me too so i think that's what's so cool about lacrosse it's such a family sport and a family activity and um you know it's, it's definitely a lot different than other sports out there so is it weird oh, this is funny this is a funny question is it weird playing against some of your teammates when you play against team usa Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's always hard. It's, it's so hard because once that game starts and, and you're no longer teammates anymore, you just still have so much respect for them. Um, and at the same time, you want your teammates from the WPLL to play so well because you love them so much and they're incredible people and even better lacrosse players. Um, yeah, it's definitely weird. It's definitely weird drawing against Taylor and Marie McCool. And, you know, I just love those guys so much. And I love watching them play. So being an attacker, it gives me, you know, a lot of time to watch them do their thing on offense. And then when they come down and play, play defense against me, I have to forget that, that they're some of my best friends and uh, some of my teammates too. But yes, that's a very, very weird, weird feeling. And, uh, you know, once that game starts, it's all business. And then once that World Cup game is over, we're back to being friends again, too. But uh, I think that that's always tough, but it is what it is. What is your favorite lacrosse shot? Katie, my favorite lacrosse shot is a behind the back. Um, we call that the Canadian right hand. Um, it's probably why I don't use my right hand as often. It's just looking to go with that behind the back. But I just love your stick has eyes. So you have your defender going one way and looking one way. And then you can get that little behind the back pass or that behind the back shot going. And some people kind of say that's hot dogging it or, or being too fancy. But for me, it's just like shooting left hand, shooting right hand. It's just your behind the back. And if you practice it enough, it can be as easy as that for you too. So, um... All right, you guys. Well, thank you so, so much for, for joining me. And Taylor, thank you so much for allowing me to take over your YouTube channel. I hope I did okay. This was my first time. So um, thank you guys so much for logging on and asking all your questions. And if you have any more, you can hit me up on Instagram, dd27. Um, and I think right now, just appreciate this extra time that you have at home with your families, you know, do a couple chores for your parents that you wouldn't normally do. Get outside in your backyard and, and have fun with your stick and, and be creative and just appreciate the little things right now. And big shout out to all the health heroes out there, you know, working when we're, when we're at home and doing everything you can. And um, just stay safe, everyone. And I'm thinking about everybody and have the best have the best rest of your day, and we don't know when this is all is going. All this is going to be over, um, but we do know once it once it is, lacrosse is going to be back in action, and the WPLL can't wait to play for you all, you guys, this summer, hopefully, and in the coming years as well. So thanks everybody. Look forward to see everyone again soon. Bye.